live from Las Vegas. It's the Q, covering Oracle's modern marketing experience. Brought to you by Oracle. Now here's your host, John Furrier and Peter Burris. So digital transformation, we've been hearing for years and yep. years and years. It's coming, it's coming. Peter and I were talking earlier, the time is now for ROI. We talked to uh -huh. Vic from the agency side. Uh -huh. They're under pressure. Show me the beef. Where's the meat on the bone? Yeah. What is happening? I need to see the data. I need to see results. Yep. At the end mm. of the day, that's kind of like the bloom is off the rose on all right. the hype. Right. It's ROI, it's data. What's your thoughts? Can you share uh, your thoughts on that, that perspective? Well, I, I, I'm excited about, uh, uh, there's probably a thousand things at this modern marketing experience. Haven't been at the helm here for three years that I'm excited about. If you have me zeroed down to a couple of them though, um, gents, one of them is what you just talked about, is here now, right? Um, you know, when we started this journey a couple years ago, it was about, oh, this is the art of the possible. This is what might happen sometime in the future, right? This is what we're going to enable um, and make theoretically possible, and it's going to do all this great stuff for you, right? But it was pretty much an idea. Um, and to have an, a pretty big idea, pretty transformative idea, that's going to translate into structural competitive advantage for these customers that do it well, and to have that be a conversation about what's coming three years ago, to have Fortune 50 CPG and Fortune 50 retail and Fortune 50 financial services and you know, Fortune 50 tech companies join us here and have their chief marketing officers not talk about what they're thinking about doing, what they're going to do in the future, but how they're transforming their companies and their earnings per share and their customer experience and customer relationships right now real, because they've actually implemented this stuff and they've taken it from the theoretical. They've taken all this data, content, media, applications, acquisition, et cetera. They've put it all together and they're fundamentally changing their companies and um, it's an exciting time because it's, it's not theoretical anymore, it's actually happening. It's going down for real, as they say. Yeah, My kids right. love that yep. song, going down for real. So yep. the real story, so I want to get drilled down into that. So let's, let's peel that back. So I've been, I was not super critical, but you know, I kind of pointed out what everyone's talking about, mm -hmm. which is Oracle has acquired their way, and I asked Mark Hurd directly in January, yeah. there's organic innovation and there's inorga inorganic. So there's a lot of M&A in right. your portfolio, and the question is, how do you integrate all this stuff? And then, you guys made an interesting bet, and we, we fleshed this out of Oracle Open World, the data becomes a very critical component. That's right. So can you share the payback you're getting from the data, the bet you made on making data universally shareable, you can talk about that, yeah. and two, Making it all integrate, because yep. no one wants more work, right? Especially CMOs, they're not IT. Uh, nor do they aspire to be. <laughs> <laughs> and quite frankly, the CIO is sick of supporting a very fragmented, undisciplined potpourri of crap for the CMO too, so both sides are actually happy about this. Um, a couple things there. One, uh, Oracle Marketing Cloud is 100% made of acquisition, as you know not just part, right? So we've had a very aggressive acquisition agenda. We set out to buy very, very best of breed companies, right? Certain companies have a philosophy, oh, I'm just going to pick up an asset, right? It'll be a capability, I'm going to go that way. We decided to actually go by the market leader in every single functional, you know, major category we picked up. Number two, all the tech giants, not just Oracle, have been relatively guilty of this the last several decades. So I'm going to buy all these great toys. I'm not going to do any integration right, at the data, the workflow, the UI, the analytic level, and I'm going to try to convince the customer that just because I now own all these companies, that's integration value and you should buy from me instead of somebody else, instead of actually being really, really committed at all of those levels to true integration, and as you saw today, right on stage, that's been one of the hallmarks of what we've done here is not just acquiring best of breed, but, but being religious and committed to shipping very, very quickly, within year well, one, real, real integration that provides real value to the So for the folks watching who didn't see the keynote, just drill down and quickly explain that integration piece, because that's a big message today. Yeah. What's going on? Give us a quick update on integration, um, the meat and the bone, what's happening now, what's the highlight? Right, and, and we, we, Oracle Marketing Cloud is comprised of some very, very important, what heretofore have been relatively siloed, right? Web optimization uh, and A-B testing has been its own thing. E-commerce has been its own thing. Marketing automation has been its own thing. The DMP has been its own thing. Ad tech has been its own thing. We not only have to continue to innovate and scale and be best of breed in every one of those silos, we got to say when you put one plus one plus one together, voila, 10 happens, right? And there's an immense value unlocked because we put the two together in an intelligent way. And that has been the theme, right? Um, not just today, uh, but over the last couple of years. Today we made a huge deal about it because we announced very meaningful, not PowerPoint, not looks good in the demo, 
but very real. <laughs> it's in there when you log on to the product benefit. And what that really means is in addition to being world-class in each one of these independent core competencies, we've been talking about, you know what, this is going to turn into this marketing operating yeah. system or this one control panel, this one reference stack for the digital CMO, and guess what? It's, it's not science fiction anymore with the integrations that we announced that are very real, right, and are making this seamless application interface flow from workflow to workflow, process to process, silo to silo, having it all there. Um, for real, not in PowerPoint, is changing the lives of the CMOs that are actually investing. And so those demos were shipping product or? Shipping the, the, those are live product. Yeah, all this stuff is actually real. Um, one of the things you'll notice about Oracle, we tend to, certain companies like to sh talk about stuff they'll ship five years from now. Uh, certain companies like to talk about stuff that they're going to ship five quarters from now. We tend to not talk about it until it's actually live. Oracle executes. Oracle might yeah. not be first to the game. In this yeah. case, they'll use the M&A muscle and or inorganic, which we've seen uh, in the middleware area. Yeah. Certain Koreans group also now with Donatelli on the other side, you're seeing a lot of that execution. Yeah. When they move, they move fast. And Heard clearly was saying yep. uh, to us, and we heard him this morning, no, we're a cloud company. Yeah. All the way no in question. all cloud. And, and um, so, so real integration is the theme there not pretend integration, not talk about it, actually do it because the value creation for the CMO, if we do it well, is, is immense. Um, I'd like to opine, uh, elaborate a little bit more. Integration within <clears throat> all of these best of breed companies, be it the data companies, the DMPs, the market automation, the, the omni-channel, integration of all this incredible asset pool inside Oracle Marketing Cloud, that's a big deal. You'll notice here, right, we have got the other legs of the customer experience, right? Because mm -hmm. as, as, as in, big an effort it is to tie the entire world of marketing and ad tech together, then if you actually tie that to Salesforce automation, you tie it to commerce, you tie it to service automation, you tie it to some of the other things, that all of a sudden becomes yet another integration benefit across more of the customer experience value chain. That's the second uh, definition of integration, and that's an Oracle-wide thing, not just an Oracle Marketing Cloud thing that is delivering value to the marketplace. And then third, <clears throat> part of being a cloud leader is what you own, and how well you integrate it. The other part of the cloud leader is being the most open, interoperable ecosystem hub. And as you guys know, we've got over 900 media, data, and application partners now that actually are real integrated, not PowerPoint, not, not integrated, catalog. Integrated. Integrated into the actual, you know, we're the hub, and over 900 innovative data, media, and application partners. So again, the customer <clears throat> can have the benefits of this foundational reference stack and all the benefits of cutting edge innovation with hundreds and hundreds of partners, and we think integration means all three. Well, compare that, because your competitor, let's say Salesforce in this case, might yeah. say, oh, we got a zillion uh, integrated people too. How does that compare? Is it apples and oranges? Because they, they will claim that they have yeah. a robust ecosystem. I mean, they had a big acquisition with Exact Target, yeah. um, and then they've been kind of mute since. I mean, we haven't seen much, and they've been a heavily acquired company. Some will say that they're, uh, they're an integrating is kind of clunky too. Um, but they could claim I, the integrated I would partners. Never say that. <laughs> <laughs> never. No, I've heard no. That's, that's legit. Other people would though. Other people no, yeah. but they also would say they have a huge ecosystem. So, how do you compare your ecosystem to say um, Salesforce? Yeah, though? they do, and and they were brilliant, right? They started App Exchange last decade, and I still think that's one of the reasons they were so successful, is because they committed to being an ecosystem. I think there's a lot of difference. I'll point to two. One is that that ecosystem revolves around Salesforce automation, right? Very little of that actually revolves around marketing and ad tech. We are that. 100% revolving around marketing. So when I say 900 partners, I'm not talking about what orbits around CRM, I'm talking about what orbits around us as a marketing ad tech stack. Huge difference, number so one. So broader. Between, yeah, and, well, and with marketing in the middle, not with Salesforce automation. Well, I think, I think what you're saying is that the customer ends up in the middle of yours, the salesperson exactly right. ends up in the middle of theirs. You, you, uh, you said it very well. Yeah, and then and the number two, uh, for anybody that understands the, the, the life of a CMO, um, it can't just be applications. Right, which is what that other ecosystem is, it's just apps. Uh, ours is apps, it's media, because so much of that budget mm -hmm. actually is real-time, optimized, programmatic media budget, so it has to be all of the major media, be it video, be it yeah. display, be it social, be it et cetera, and it's hundreds of data partners. And I if you expand the definition of ecosystem to data, media, and applications, centered around marketing, not CRM, that's why this is so different. I love this concept of digital CMO stack because we yeah. look at this all the time. You can have vertically oriented solutions like say responses and whatnot, but then there has to be some sort of commoditized, horizontally integrated yeah. component, say a data layer for instance. Right. So 
Love that. I completely buy that. I think it's a home run. That's a great strategy. <laughs> Stay on that track. But I got to ask you about the shift in the industry because there's business model innovation going on too. There's business model realities of your customers' customers. Right. Right. And they're moving from, as I wrote in my notes here, commerce today is destination oriented. That's right. Go to a landing page, put up a form, or salesperson oriented. Here's a sales guy. Yeah. So the it's a they're over over indexed on form capture. That's right. Right. And yeah. then it goes to some analog sales <laughs> process. Right. The progression now is shifting to pure digital. It is. Non-linear consumption. Yep. All these kind of forces at play here. That's kind of a mind bender for the customer. Right. How are you guys addressing that? One, you agree with that, and then what are you doing in that future state that we're living in? Yeah. Now? One, I agree with it, and I would add one more thing to the kind of previous state is. Uh, just because you can hit the customer 110 times a year with Those campaigns because should. it's so cheap does not mean you should, right? <laughs> and campaign, 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 transaction, transaction. So shifting, you know what? If I actually form nonlinear relationships that are interactive and value added, instead of just chase revenue, you know what's going to happen? Revenue is going to go up faster, right? If I actually chase conversations, whether it's a B2C e-commerce customer or a B2B uh, right, direct sales customer, I, I pursue value-added conversations and context, not just campaigns. Guess what? Campaigns are going to be more effective. So it is a big, you know, it is a big mind shift. And then, you know, so much of that just comes from, I, I call it, you know, kind of going from manual to automated to predictive. If you commit to the data layer, and all of a sudden you're catching every possible meaningful piece of data, you then actually have the technology chops to marry that at the identity layer. Hey, that's Kevin. Those cookies are Kevin. That social handles Kevin. It's not the that mobile ID is Kevin. For, it's persona based. That's his persona based. And and you notice we talked about account based marketing. It's both now. It's not just persona ads and company. And that's a powerful combination. I wish we could another time. We'll spend a half an hour on that because that's a big deal. Love to. Um, but tying all that at the identity level, then having the signal itself go tell the orchestration engines, oh, the customer just told me this, this, and this. What should we go do? You know, in real time, and in across uh, you know all the things. That is, call it what you want, automated, programmatic, data-driven, response-driven, more real-time. By allowing that to happen, instead of manual people doing manual sales calls or manual campaigns and hitting them as many times as I can because it's cheap enough to do it, uh, th that's kind of driving some of this fundamental sea change. So a lot of this comes back to the idea that ultimately marketing has to be valuable to the customer. Correct, yeah. And customers buy products, but they also buy products based on their knowledge and experience of them, which means channel becomes an increasingly important part of the value proposition. Yeah. So as you look forward, if you put the customer at the center of your mm -hmm. stack, it's serving up the data, not only about the right product, but also about the right channel to work with. That's right. And the right way to engage. Yep. How do you see marketing taking on a broader role within yep. businesses yep. at combining those multiple things so yeah. the customer consistently is having the most valuable experience yeah. they can. Boy, that's a complex topic. If you dummy it down to kind of the, I, I think there's three ways you can really simplify that. One of them is context, right? Simple, but right, hey, if the customer's pissed off, don't send them the 30% off coupon. Right. Right, know that they're pissed, right? Or if the customer needs education or, or comparisons. Don't send them the don't call send, center. Th that's exactly right. So literally context. How am I going to actually take what I know and put everything I put from what's offers, you know, reviews, service calls, whatever, make sure it's context, number one. Number two is channel or device. People use those simultaneously, but those customers are out there in 17 different channels or devices all the time. Don't rely on them coming to the one you hope they come to and optimize for. You got to go get them in a seamless, you know, uh, well-orchestrated fashion. And number three is actually time, right? Everybody's consumer now, whether it's my consumer that spends seven figures on enterprise software, or a B2C t-shirt company that has 20 seconds to get the deal before their competitors does. Um, timing is everything, and if you can actually make those decisioning, offer up the right context and the right channel, and do it fast, right, at the right time, you can, you can if you do those three things, you're going to deliver on that concept that you just talked about pretty, pretty well. Yeah, we're talking about context, yep. community, yep. and capability, where context yeah. is what is the customer trying to do, community is who are they trying to do it with, and will they do it with you, right. and then capability is, how do you serve up the appropriate set of capabilities so the customer gets what they so need? It's a good way to put that. And again, if you notice a driving theme here, we don't think we're selling tech. I mean, we are. What we're selling is Able. enablement. Yeah. All technology is, yeah. is an enablement for the customer. In this case, the customer is the CMO and all the people that work for him or her. They have got a massive challenge to go pull this off. And it's not just tech, by the way. It's, process and change management and behavior and politics and governance and they've got a whole bunch of other stuff. Absolutely. Tech is just the enabler, but if we deliver it that way, 
so that it's use case, vertical, and purpose built to go enable what they're trying to do, yeah. it takes the conversation away from selling software and it turns it into a technology enablement so platform. Kevin, my final question to get your thoughts on this vision is obviously Google, Facebook can win the yeah. impression-based ad mo model, we talked about that earlier, but in the one-to-one -one experience, yeah. the, the brand's got to control their own destiny That's there. Right. So the question is, you mentioned identification, how does a brand manage this because now the customer's progression is digital, it's off property, on property, right. referring to their .com or their website, yeah. which is critical infrastructure, it's a funnel. So all these yeah. URL, the technology involved, and yet engagement's happening on other properties. That's so right. how do you, do you get customers to get that ID when no one wants to go to their website anymore? Yeah. Unless it's for like some sort of metrics. We, boy, we think that is incredibly important. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that in a couple ways instead of just one, but I think it's worth it to opine the, they're, they're facing a couple things. The power of the closed garden, right? Do I really want to optimize for the Google closed garden and that ID, and then have to do it again for the Facebook garden and that ID, and again for the Apple garden and that ID, and the Amazon garden and that ID, and the Twitter garden and that ID? I got to manage across and optimize my dollars and my customer experience across all of the closed gardens. They don't care about optimization, they care about sucking more of your media dollars into their closed garden, right? Yep. They're not going to help with this whole optimization thing. They're going to they're gonna optimize, gonna optimize for the for stack. That's exactly right. Then you've got all your owned media. You've got owned social, you've got owned mobile, you've got owned websites, you've got owned e-commerce, you've got owned call, chat, et cetera, you've got all your owned. And you've got this worldwide open mobile social web where guess what, people spend a ton of time not on your property or the closed gardens, but out here, right? And if you can't, from a data, and more importantly, an identity, right? If you are ha capturing the identity across all of that, and you're the one optimizing the customer experience and the money spent to go deliver that customer experience across all three of those, um, that's why this, what we're doing is kind of needed. Uh, I'm going to use a corny analogy, but the industry needs this Switzerland, that at the data, the identity, and the optimization layer, it can't be beholden to any of those you three. You've got to go enable, across all three. You can enable that for brands in a way that exactly right. gives them the signaling they need for the progressions that they need. And then what to go do about it well, across all of those channels. Ultimately, yeah. the state that matters that we're talking about is the state of the customer. That's right. Okay, yep. final question, yep. final, final questions. I like and it does mean questions. organizing around the customer. Oh, That's exactly right. Mm. For the folks watching, what's the vibe of the show this year? For the folks who didn't make it here, so the keynote's online, we streamed it on siliconangle.com. What's the vibe of the show? What's the hallway conversation? What's, the, what's, the, what's going on? It's, 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 you know, it's the biggest. Uh, so it's the biggest we've ever had. Uh, if you heard me yesterday, 30 countries is the most global we've ever had. It's the most diverse, right? All the solution sets, uh, it's not just this or this or this now, it's covering everything. We got over 60 customers doing courses for us, right? We're not doing the one training. Their peer group, yeah. who are already excellent practitioners, are the ones actually leading the charge, which is, that's phenomenal, right? That doesn't happen very often. So that's pretty good that just it's more successful and more relevant. 2,200 people don't show up and fly from 30 countries. If this isn't pretty relevant and pretty important, you don't take a week out of your busy schedule and come here. That's number one. Number two, that, that comment I made at the beginning, people are so psyched because they're hearing about real stuff being done by real peers and real yeah. brands. They can leave and do something They can different. literally leave and learn from partner, my, my peer one, peer two, peer three. I picked up actual knowledge of stuff that's not PowerPoint or Oracle has ideas, but actually stuff that's going on um, in real practitioner land. And number three is, uh, the, uh, there's actually real results tied to it. So now not only do they understand how to actually go do this, they can translate all this marketing ad tech speak into CFO speak and CEO speak saying, hey, if I make yeah. these investments and do these transformational things, these are the kind of business results that are earnings per share changing that we should expect if we make similar investments. And you know, they need that because once we get ourselves and the CMO on the same side of the table, we still got to go convince the CIO to shift calories, the CFO to shift dollars, and the yeah. CEO to shift strategy to go support what we want to do together, and they're getting that in spades this year, um, which is really, it's really exciting. It's not just Oracle either. You have yeah. Deloitte up there, you got Mintigo, right. um, yeah. independent companies out there yeah. doing cool stuff. So yeah. Building it's, an Oracle. It's real. It's the new It's Oracle. happening, right? Like you said, it's <laughs> going, going down, down for real. Going down for it's real. Not, it's not PowerPoint anymore. It's not futures. It's actually going on, and people are excited about that. So the space is going to explode yeah. and a lot of changes come. I'm sure we're going to see this thing grow in multiple directions. Yep. A lot of, lot of touch points, a lot of omni-channel growth opportunities, yep. so to speak. This is theCUBE, bringing Going Down For Real here with Kevin Eckerroyd's GM, Senior Vice President of yeah. Oracle Marketing Cloud. We'll be right back with more live coverage. SiliconANGLE's theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Peter Burris. We'll be right back after this short yeah. Always a pleasure, guys. Thank you. Yep.